we hmm. not so lucky over here in the northwest near Seattle, but uh, it's all right. We'll, we'll get our good days. Ah, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I did go to Seattle many years ago and um, climbed the Space Needle. Um, <laughs> I like that the fact that you said climbed. Cause I think I, I, it was a long time ago. I can't remember how I got to the top. Yeah. Oh well. I, yeah, I climbed. I climbed on the outside, like uh, you know, with 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 uh, ropes and crampons and things. No, nice. I think I went up the um, lift. I think it went up in a lift or something. Nice. For those that yeah, the, the Space Needle is a great little iconic thing for the city, and mm. you know, it's been around since the World's Fair in the '60s. In fact, uh, mm. Elvis shot a movie there. In fact, I, okay. I think it was called like the World's Fair. He, I think he wrote a song about it. Anyway. Mm. Yeah, I went there many years ago, and then I went on to another place called Yakima. Yep. Do you know where that's? Yep, Yakima. That's the east of the mountains. Okay, of, yeah. In eastern Washington. Oh yeah, good, good memory. That's ex- that's excellent. Yeah, it was a nice place. I remember. Yeah. Interesting um, place to grow up. I mean, you you know, if you're not, and yeah. actually for for Londoners, it wouldn't be too different because uh, Seattle gets a lot of overcast days a year. So the climate, I think, is very similar. Yeah, I, I, like, I want to head back to America sometime. I've been there a few times and I've always always enjoyed it. Um, I was in Atlanta, Atlanta area, um, some oh. years back as well. Yep. Um, nice. And um, basically, I'm just going to check. That, first of all, check that this is recording because uh, oh, sure. I'd hate to get to the end, and which has happened in the past. Oh no, I, I've been there. <laughs> I've done entire shows, and yeah. then all of a sudden, it couldn't take or. In fact, I think I've done five or six interviews where uh, the show was canceled. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. back in the beginning, people were like going for broke. It's like, okay, this is going to be my last episode, so I might as well go all out. And yeah. uh, I, in fact, I did even a show with Patricia where we knew it wasn't going to air, and we never even recorded it. So. Uh, okay, anyway. cool. Yeah. Um, Does it look like it's okay? Looks like it's recording fine. Um, I'll tell you what, just to be just to be sure, I'll record it on my side simultaneously. Okay, great. That'd be good. Yeah. All right. We haven't we haven't started the official show yet. Um, okay. I was just going to basically say thanks for doing this, by the way. Oh, um, very welcome. Happy to do so, it. I have not turned yeah. down any requests, with the exception of, and it wasn't even formal. A guy who wanted to debate, but he was from the Texas Atheist Society. Uh, right. And it's like, what? Is, what? How does that help me? <laughs> <don't know. laughs> That's like yeah, weird. Yeah. It, I'm not, I'm not, you know, he's going to say, I don't believe in the Big Bang. And I'm going to say, well, I think the Big Bang has, pro- you know, problems too, or, or whatever. Mm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. And um, how many of these interviews do you do a day then? You must be quite busy. I've done a lot. Well, I've got, this will be my hundred and, oh, geez, i got to look it up, 15th, 116th, officially, that, that I'm going to post. Mm. And then I've got one after this. I have Patricia's show at three, and then... Uh, no, I, I I did one last night I, I, from uh, Dubai of all places. Mm. That was really weird. I don't know, but mm. and uh, so we'll see. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot. Okay, um, yeah. I was going to also apologize in advance if if some of the things I'm going to ask are probably things you must have been asked oh, no, 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 again no, no, and again. No, but no, I mean, re- repetition is one of the keys here. You know, you have to you have to drive it into people you've got to be I'll, I'll use a joke here you got to repeat yourself you got to be repetitive you got to be redundant mm. you got to say the same thing over and over the, yeah. because without it you know people it, it's how we learn in school you know you it's how we it's true, it's pick true. up things i mean any any vocabulary stuff any math stuff you know you just like the uh, i don't know if you call them times tables over there the multiplication tables yeah that's right yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> look it's just you're beaten into your head whether it be, be normal uh, educational stuff or punishment through it's very true i did get a punishment at school for not knowing the answer to seven eights and i had to walk around the playground uh, repeating it again and again yeah. and to this day if anyone says seven eights i just say 56 like just straight off you know yeah, yeah. anyway sure or should we start let's do it yeah okay. um I'm, I'm gonna put the intro in afterwards which will basically i'll just take the info about you basically sort of saying that you run you know uh, Oh, this phone's ringing in the background. I'll just let that ring. Um, okay. uh, so I'll put the intro um, in later, just saying Mark Sargent, and I'll take some of the details from your YouTube channel. Okay. You know about about you. Um, I think it says growing up in South Whidbey Island, things like that. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Okay, good. Let me just go to the. F- I've got. I've got. Um, I've got basically got framework questions, and of course we can just sort of to and fro as well. It's oh, pretty. Oh yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not worried. I've 
done, I think, pretty much every format there is. With the exception of television. Still waiting. <laughs> it's probably only a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. with this point, it sure, certainly looks like it. Uh, this thing is not slowing down in the in the slightest. It just gets weirder and bigger. And I'm, I'm waiting for some celebrity that's going to come out of nowhere and, and just start, <laughs> start talking mm -hmm. to people about it. You know, like in the middle of an interview for a movie. It's, I was like, oh yeah. yeah. So I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't put a question in about Joe Rogan because because you're talking about celebrities. I was going to mention him, but I didn't actually put a question. But if we get round to it, we'll... oh well, let's. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, go ahead and we'll make sure oh, you don't... ask because that's kind of important because he's doing a big thing on it today. Sorry, can I can I um just call you back in about thirty seconds? I've sure. got all these phones ringing. I'll just sure, tell them to I call hear back. I a whole bunch later. of phones. Yeah, sure. Go yeah. ahead. Okay, thanks. Well, actually, don't even do, don't even mm. don't even hang up. Just put me on mute. Okay, fine. Okay. I'll just hold on a sec. Okay. Hello, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Sorted. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to basically start by saying uh, hello, uh, welcome to Truth Center in a second, okay? So okay. I'm just going to leave a small pause, and then that'll be the, the next sentence. Okay. Okay, welcome to Truth Sentinel, Mark. Uh, very nice of you to join us. It is my pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. You're very welcome. Um, I know the first rule of Flat Earth is not to mention it, but um, it's almost impossible to avoid in today's uh, interview. So yeah. um, let's start with the obvious cliche question. Um, what first got you into making Flat Earth clues and talking about this topic? What initially got me into it was that I was a conspiracy guy. Still am. You know, I, I looked into all sorts of different conspiracies, and this is the one conspiracy that everybody has heard of, but nobody has looked at because it's so obvious. It's ridiculous, it's silly, it's insane, and why would you ever look at it? It's the book on the shelf that somebody gave you as a Christmas gift, and you're never going to open it. Because it looks terrible. The, the book cover is terrible. The title is terrible. It, it might as well literally be called uh, My Favorite Poop Sandwich. That's seriously <laughs> what it would... Because it's just awful. It's like, oh, it's a terrible book. And when I was on YouTube, I happened to glance... You know, I was digging through, you know, to see what the heck's out there. And saw a video by a German guy who was talking about the flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere. How they didn't make any sense on a globe the the connections were really weird and, they, and there were almost no non-stops and so on and so on so i kind of looked into it and then i looked into another video by a canadian named uh, matt boylan who said that he worked for nasa as a contract artist and during some high level party they mentioned to him that the earth the gps doesn't work down in antarctica because the earth is flat at that point i'm going okay all right it's sound you know these are good stories. I like them as stories, but they cannot possibly be true. There's no way. Everybody knows the Earth is a globe. And I started, I made the mistake. I started looking into it. Again, if anyone's listening out there, if you don't want your life to be turned upside down, literally, <laughs> don't look at this thing. It, it, you, you don't want to do it because you're, you're going to lose a whole bunch of sleep. And by the time you're done, everything's going to change. And yeah, you'll, st you'll start questioning everything. Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll literally question everything. And you'll have to revisit every conspiracy you've ever thought about. So that's what I did. I started looking at this thing, looking at this thing. And I'm stubborn. You know, I'm, I consider myself a very creative problem solver. Not necessarily fast, but creative. And I thought I could solve it. And nine months later, I'm, I wake up in the middle of the night in February of uh, 2015. And I had it. I, I was like, okay. I'm going to flip, I'm going to go the other way, which is I'm going to make a series of videos, I'm going to call them Flat Earth Clues, and I'm going to put them out on the internet, and I'm going to basically ask the question to all the academic people out there, you know, the brainy types, people's, people with some sort of master's degree in something, and what, tell me, tell me how you know the Earth is a globe. And that's how I got started, and thought for sure in, in the beginning that it was going to get shot down. It did not get shot down, as a matter of fact, it resonated extremely well to where I was getting interview requests within the first few weeks and uh, the, the book thing happened uh, within eight months and you know, podcasts and websites and all this fun stuff and subject matter experts were contacting me to where now you know here we are two years later and it's the it's a it's a community that's massive and not only is the, the community massive on YouTube but there's a hidden community out there you know, there's the secret flat earthers, the closet flat earthers. They, they've got to number in the millions by now. 
Uh, yeah, because it's, it's, it's probably not something that a lot of people want to admit that they've been thinking about or looking into because yeah. you, you open yourself to ridicule. Oh, yeah, imagine. yeah, your family. And, and I still get emails every single week about people that'll say, oh, yeah, my, my, I went and told people over my, again, that's the, fl the Fight Club reference, which is the first rule of, mm -hmm. of Flat Club is you do not talk about Flat Club. Because if you talk about this to your family over dinner, you better be ready for a lot of massive knee-jerk reactions. And that's what eventually will be if I do public speaking stuff on this will be the the big preface is there is no other topic that generates this sort of emotion and I dare you to find one now of course you know if you're if you're big um, anti-vaccination or you know gay rights or black rights or women's rights or something like that yeah you may have an opinion on it but you're not going to lash out at the person you know right in their face and say you're stupid you're an idiot I can't believe you're looking at this uh, this is the only topic. It's because of your conditioning. You were given a globe. It was put in your classroom. No, nobody's been to space. You haven't been to space. You don't know anyone that's been to space. Technically, even the United States government says there's only 500 people ever who even claim to have been to space. So if you haven't been there, why are you getting so upset? It's because the globe was in your classroom since you were six years old. And yeah. you were just told this over and over, repetition. That you were told, this is where you live. This is where you live, and twelve years later, phew, that's it. You're done, and 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 even doing that through high school makes it difficult to convince, but not impossible, obviously, because here we are. But if you have a, a master's degree or higher in a physical science, there's nothing we can do for you. Your the, the condition is is too far gone. You it would have you'd have to take some professional counseling just to snap you out of it. I mean, I talked to a guy the other day who had a, a master's in just mathematics. And there's nothing, nothing I could do for him. He I mean he was basically saying that math is the truth. You know, math was the religion to him, and and because math proved that it was a globe, even though you know, it can be faked. You know, math proved for 400 years. I'm like, no, no, no. And anyway, I could go off and on. So. It, Mm. Continue on with whatever you can ask. Yeah, yeah, I've got plenty of questions, so don't ever feel so. Yeah, you, we can we can keep them. You know, some of your answers can be. I I will uh, not not. They don't have to be too long. You can talk as much as you like, but um, I'm just letting you know that there's plenty to go through okay. today. Go go it's, go. What do you got? It's a huge topic. Um, I will, I was try, to be, say, I will try to be more brief. No, 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 that's fine. Um, I was going to say. Um, so do you think part of the point of discussing flat Earth is an academic exercise in making people work things out for themselves? and not being slaves to higher academic authorities. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that, that's an interesting point that you'd, you'd bring up because the guy just this morning, a YouTube channel called Josh Tolley, he one of the first guys I've seen with a channel over 100,000 subscribers where he opened up saying that really this is a thinking exercise, which is don't lash out at flat earthers for the belief because they are helping people go through thought process. Heck, more people are l learning basic physics and basic scientific principles, basic science, everything, because of what we're doing. Before this thing happened, nobody knew what eight inches per mile squared meant. Nobody. And now you, know, you could ask any flat earther, and they'll all say, you know, what is it? It's eight inches per mile squared. And, and how, how fast is the Earth rotating? And how fast is the Earth supposedly rotating around the sun? And, you know, the distance of the moon, the distance of the sun, so on and so on. It's, uh, it's really been amazing how it has opened people's minds up to questioning things and not taking things for granted. The that's, that's very true. true. I, can, I can attest to that since looking into this a bit. Um, I've sort of yeah looked at this the rotation of the Earth, the speed of rotation, and um, yeah, yeah, the, the eight inches per mile drop, which um, is a bit more compli complicated than you think at first. Like mm -hmm. it's eight, eight inches squared, like you say. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, in fact, a lot of people screw it up went the first time because you don't. In fact, that shows you why this thing is resonating so well is because science is. We've dumb. I, I, I'm not making fun of the audience. We've dumbed down the population to such a degree that even the the basic algebra stuff has been lost. To where I've said eight inches per mile to square to people, I, a lot of people, and they just glaze over. It's like, oh crap! <laughs> I do not remember my high school mathematics. And it's easy, you know. It's eight inches times every mile times itself. And that, even then, I mean, yeah, it gets a little trickier once you get past like a thousand miles. But for our intents and purposes, we use most of our distances are less than five hundred miles. 
but it's yeah. so it's two miles. It's two times two, which is four times eight inches, which is thirty two, and three times three is nine times eight is seventy two, and then it gets worse from from there. And that is it, for for us, it's been the crux of how this thing has really grabbed hold because there's distances out there which are easy to understand. You know, fifty miles, fifty times fifty times eight, which comes in at just about under seventeen hundred feet, right? And that means that's 1,700 feet of curvature. You should not see an object at 50 miles that's less than 1,700 feet tall. And we do all the time. And, that, and I didn't even put that in the clues. You know, the curvature thing is, is really a great... And since people test it on water, because water doesn't curve, supposedly, the, everyone goes to the beach or their nearest body of water, and that's what they make the tests on. And I love it. It's, it's been fantastic. Yeah, and I've been looking into Flat Earth, and there's a lot of, um, definitely a lot of interesting points made. Anyone out there who thinks it's a crazy idea, just start looking into it a bit, and you'll, you'll see that, you know, you'll be prompted to, a bit like episodes of Lost, you'll be prompted to move on to the next uh, yeah. next one, and, to, and to see it, where you get. To defend their point of view, it absolutely is crazy. That's the point. You've been conditioned so much to never, ever look at it that your your knee-jerk response is it's crazy i'm not kidding you when i said the first time i clicked on a youtube video that had flat earth in the title i physically got flushed embarrassed to click on it and i caught myself doing it i was like whoa, whoa why i've clicked on some pretty wild things on the internet we all have but why would this embarrass me this is stupid and that's because of the conditioning and the the, the question that people should ask the, the the easiest question out there that i've been trying to boil it down for people is this Eventually, if you say, if I say to you, how do you know the Earth is a globe? Sooner or later, you're going to lean on one of the space programs. I don't care if it's NASA or JAXA or the European group, or it doesn't really matter. So how did we know before that? If NASA released the first picture, you know, they were the first in 1972, how did you know before 1972? And they say, well, no, NASA was around since the 50s, fine, 1958, they, they were formed. How did you know before 1958? Because you can't go back before that. And 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 I say, you know, that we've been told it's a globe for 450 years before that. How did you know? And eventually you're going to have to admit the words. And that is science told you. That's and, true, yeah. And, and I mean, I, I'm very clear about that. They told you. You don't know. They told you. Fire burns. Water is wet. You drop something. It falls to the ground. These are things you can test right now, right? But when it comes to the shape of the earth, this is something that the United States military announced. Uh, you know, people inside this country, you want to believe it, fine. I get it. You know, go team, rah, rah, USA. But outside of this country, I don't know why everyone believes the Americans. I don't know why. I mean, are we that shiny and, and we everyone knows the Americans lies with their teeth. So why why would they believe this? And it's like, and it's because they did it through science. You know, they did it with with a uh, NASA wears white uniforms. They don't carry guns. They smile for the cameras, and it looks legit. You know, they they seem harmless. They seem benign, but it's exactly the opposite. Yeah, and as you mentioned before, um, it evokes strong views if you if uh, you question it with someone, oh, yeah. and. Um, I think I agree with you that people should at least know something truly for themselves. If they're going to have such strong views on something, strong beliefs, they should at least know the ins and outs of it a bit a bit more. Um, right. I mean, I'm I'm open a lot to a lot of the ideas, but I'm not quite as convinced yet that we definitely are on a, a flat Earth. Um, I wondered whether you are now, whether you're 100 percent sure, like some some other people uh, in the flat Earth community are, and and if so, what were the key facts that tipped you over to the flat Earth side? I will tell you what I've told people since the beginning, because I really haven't wavered, which is the, on the flatter side, which is one of the things I really love about the community, is that we carry a lot of different flags. So it's kind of like, a, I use a, a, an English reference, you know, the Scottish Highlands, you know, all the clans. They every, there's so many different opposing, but they do have a common enemy, which is the globe. So on our side, we have people that believe in a dome. We have people that believe that there's no dome. We have people that believe in, in other continents outside of it, or that it's an infinite plane and there's different pockets. But what we do know for an absolute fact is that the powers that be are going to in a huge amount of effort and spending a lot of resources to hide what this world really is. Uh, the globe is, the, here's a perfect example, the, the, 
there was a lot of little things that convinced me when I was building, which is why I did the clues the way I did. You know, I, there was a lot of different aspects that pointed in the same direction. If one of those clues would have pointed in a completely different direction, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done them. But they all pointed in the same thing, which is um, that at the very least, the world isn't what you think it is right now. And do uh, you want a quick example would be the lack of pictures of the Earth from space. I mean, sheer lack of pictures up until very, very recently, which is the Americans took the first shot in 1972. And you recognize it was the most highly reproduced picture in our civilization, which shows the bottom part of Africa and of all of Antarctica. And there was no second picture literally until two years ago. 43 years went by and nobody took a full disc sunlight picture of the earth or claimed that there was a full picture it was always just composite images in fact all the way up until 2000 there wasn't even any cgi images it wasn't even com composite i saw that for an absolute fact I, I happened to just for whatever reason randomly search the internet because i was looking for iconic globe pictures for the tech support team that i was managing and there were none it was only that apollo 17 mission photo and you can't tell me you know 43 years you're going to a lot of trouble not to show you what there should not only should there be thousands and thousands and thousands of photos from the earth from space from every probe we've ever sent out in varying resolutions but there should be an hd channel right now the with a geostationary so, uh, uh, satellite or a different satellite there should be multiple satellites out there broadcasting the earth from space rotating with the earth morphing in high resolution all the time and there isn't mm. i mean that's just one example but let me let me throw one more out thing at you which is the the big thing that and people will run into this when you're going down this trail because I've, I've seen it too many times in emails is you'll lean on the space program and you'll look at the stuff you'll you'll look and say well the space program will save me from this madness because obviously it's insanity there's so many things that aren't there that should be there like there is no footage of an astronaut outside of a spacecraft and i don't care if it's the moon or anything even in orbit where he takes the camera and he pans 180 degrees or further in exterior interior doesn't count because you can shoot interior any, anywhere exterior it's never ever happened there's no footage of any rocket with a camera on it leaving the pad and leaving earth orbit or coming back it's it's never happened there, we don't even have a, a, a movie of an, an astronaut in an airlock where he opens up the airlock and he goes out of it from his point of view uh, there's so many little things that just aren't there when you're when you're leaning on nasa the van allen radiation belts it's it's a it's a beautiful one which is like the van allen belts announced by nasa in 1959 says they're super deadly you know uh, 60,000 miles thick and yet we sent apollo 8 through apollo 17 through these belts nobody died nobody got radiation poisoning nobody even got cancer so what shielding did you use nasa there is no shielding you can look up the specs yourself it, it was aluminum and plastic and that radiation can be stopped by lead and it can be stopped by gold but they're very very heavy and they didn't you know they still won't won't answer that question uh, yeah, I think that that's a lot of the problems with some of these topics is um, NASA aren't very forthcoming with answering questions, are they? No, they're not. And to be fair, you know, they, they had a hard road because when they decided to do this, you know, starting with the Apollo program, they 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 kind of painted themselves into a corner because whatever technology they used to fake the moon missions and they absolutely were faked. I and mean, those those moon missions have been torn apart for years now they had to stay consistent with everything else you know you had they showed space a certain way and they had to keep showing space that way because that's how they showed it in the 60s and, and the footage is dated really horribly and nasa's scrambling they don't they don't know what to do at this point they're releasing some stuff here and there but the images are terrible uh, well i mean i have to um i have to agree with you on some of these points um they there was a recent um in the last few weeks i would say um image of uh, the earth from saturn did yeah. you see that one? It's, which yes. is literally a white dot, and um, yeah. I actually replicated it in ten minutes on Microsoft Paint. Oh, you yeah. can make it. You can copy it yourself using Microsoft Paint. I did that just to illustrate. Like, um, it's not very impressive, and 
you would have thought they could have snapped some images on the way to Saturn of Earth. Yeah, so I agree with exactly. you that there's there doesn't seem to be enough pictures of the Earth. No, but... one of, one of your fellow countrymen, he's a fairly uh, popular uh, parkour guy, uh, vegan guy. He said on one of a popular British thing where he said he goes, it's when you look at the NASA stuff, he goes, it's really thin. The, the the term there's just not enough there to convince you whereas we have tons of arguments we can throw out and you get you get very few rebuttals on their side so is that eric dubai is it no 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 not eric no not one of our guys one of uh, uh, uh i can't remember his name i'll, I'll send it to you when we're done okay, uh, but yeah. he's uh, he's one of your countrymen okay fine um so do, do you think people have a big problem talking about uh, something that goes against everything they've been taught all their life and, and flat earth expo exposes that and kind of gets them to you know if you bring it up they kind of glitch and uh, almost oh, yeah. short circuit then yeah yeah yeah. Uh, i'll use two references one is a movie one was from real life uh the the, the matrix reference neo when neo was first told and the, the saying from the movie is we do not free a mind after a certain age where when he was finally told when he was shown what the matrix is he flipped out you know it is it's jarring to you and i actually had an elderly gentleman uh, during a call-in show not my show but a different show where he asked me how old he wa i was and i uh, told him i was you know, younger than him and he goes how dare you how dare you young man tell me the world isn't what i think it is because mm. it's the only conspiracy you can't walk away from or run away from or hide from. You, you don't want to talk about 9-11, fine. You don't want to talk about you know Sandy Hook or any of the American wars or anything we've ever done. That's fine. There are some secrets that can be buried in the desert and you're never going to see them again. But when it comes to this, you know, the world itself, this is something you're walking around on. And if all of a sudden I tell you, oh, yeah, by the way, you're in a sound stage. <laughs> You know, you're in a you're in a Truman show. You're in a planetarium slash terrarium, and and you've been there your whole life, and you've been fooled. But it's not your fault. You're still gonna get really. It's gonna it's uneasy for some people. I've had people say they get claustrophobic, and and a lot of people, you know, it, it is. It's the ultimate mind blowing thing. It's it's this Twilight Zone episode. Yeah. Um. I, I was I was thinking during this conversation we should. Uh, sort of reference maybe some things that people can check out for themselves on the internet. One one thing I was thinking of about the moon landings. Um, mm -hmm. Again, with a lot of with with flat Earth moon and moon lands, I'm still not sure. But the more you investigate things, the more doubtful things become. Um, if you look at the the interviews that uh, the astronauts give after, just after they've come right. come back to Earth, it's very dubious. Yeah, the <laughs> it's, uh, their, their their expressions are, are not of people who've just done one of the greatest things mankind have, ach have achieved. Oh yeah, that was the international press conference that they did, and you know, in full color, decent resolution. I think it was shot. I well, I don't know what it was shot with, but it was it, the three astronauts that were up there were. Their body language was was completely wrong. We've had people that have taken a lot of psychology, look at these guys and say, "Okay, what's the deal with this?" Yeah, they, you're right. They should have been smiling. You couldn't have uh, you couldn't have removed those smiles surgically from from their faces. Should have been there. And instead, it was the opposite. These guys look look like they were in an interrogation room. They looked it, guilty mm -hmm. as sin. I actually um. I was talking with a friend about this, and uh, we, we said they look as though they've been just, just it's just been revealed to them that, that the training session they did in a studio, they were then told, okay, by the way, we're going to have to tell the public this is that was real, what that right. training session you just did, right. and it's almost like they're not happy about doing it, but they've kind of very quickly had to go along with it or or it, um a flat earther might say they've been up and they've seen that the earth's flat you know no no, they, no no yeah uh, no i i disagree i don't think any astronaut's been the top of anything because mm -hmm. it's too risky i mean you're putting uh, a person human being on the on a pile of liquid explosives as not a place you want to be i think mm -hmm. they were told though and i think the apollo program was the last group of astronauts where they told them why they were faking it why they were doing what they were doing which was that the earth isn't what you think it is and who knows you know the the ulterior motives like you know the aliens told us not to tell anybody or mm. or whatever whatever it is it they were told you know but but the apollo astronauts were informed of the truth and it was too big for them i mean most of these guys became recluses they crawled into bottles they acted really weird i mean look up the neil armstrong speech that he did in the 90s with bill clinton where he was addressing some future space people and and saying that 
that uh, there's so much work to do if you can uncover one of truth's hidden protective layers. It's like, why would you say this during a speech? You know, it was on television. Why, why would you do that? He, there was, and I don't want to tear, we, we could do an entire show on, on the moon landing stuff. You guys want to look up stuff that tears apart the moon landing. There's tons of videos out there. But it did, I will summarize it with this. I didn't believe in the moon missions for a long time either, but I couldn't come up with a reason of why you would fake it. Because that's the, that's the big one everyone comes back to, mm. which is why, why, why do you fake the moon missions? And for me, I had a good reason, which was, well, okay, well, you know, America's great, rah, rah, wave the flag, go, as, go USA. I get that. It's a good reason, but it's not a great reason. Flat Earth answers it, which is they didn't want to fake the moon missions. They had to. They absolutely had to fake it. If you do not fake the moon missions and do it fairly quickly, you know, you've got to do it before 1980, then you're leaving the door open for the big subcontractors, you know, the people that made the parts for NASA. You know, NASA is just a, a military organization. The equipment is built by somebody else. Those companies could step in and do their own thing and do it on a commercial level. You do not want corporations like Lockheed or General Dynamics or Boeing in cooperation with, I don't know, who else wants to fund it. You know, BMW, Mercedes, Doritos. Somebody's going to want to go up there and plant the proverbial flag uh, up, up on the moon. You don't want that to happen. You've got to shut it down. You've got to militarize space. And you've got to do it quick and then make it to where, it, make the, to where people have no reason to go. And you know, then they say, oh, it's boring. There's nothing there. We're never going to go back. And then, of course, you know, the big mystery is like why the Russians quit, you know, the big mm -hmm. space race. And, and then Americans get there first and the Russians just shut down their space program. Come on. No, they just, shut... a quick, um, just a quick reference back to um, something you men mentioned previously, the ISS. A lot of people would say, look, they do stream um, the pictures of the Earth or, or video of the Earth from the ISS. Oh, yeah. I know I know personally there's some problems with that. But just for listeners, um, what's your issue with the ISS stream? The ISS stream... <laughs> Like if you see if you've seen any of the, the space movies that have come out in the last five, ten years, we the, the special effects teams have gotten very good at what they do. We can do this. You could I challenge you anyone that thinks the ISS is real as far as the, the live streams go, go and watch the movie Gravity again with George Clooney and Sandra Bullock. Not necessarily in that order because I know she was nominated for that role. And that is, you could take, if you took her, the face, facial shots out of that movie, and you could intersplice those shots with just about anything NASA has put out recently, and they would even look better than the NASA footage. That's how good we've gotten. We can fake space now, to a limited extent. If it's pre-recorded, we can fake it. Live, we still have a huge, huge problem with it. But when it comes to CGI graphics, look, we've, we've all seen the movies over the years we can make a good sp fake space movie not like we, not like in the 60s and, and look in fact look what we did in the 60s uh the the one movie that stood the test of time was stanley kubrick's 2001 a space odyssey watch that in blu-ray again if you've never seen it it is aged amazingly well and that movie is 50 years old so yeah yeah and uh so, some people say that um they're using uh sort of blue screen or no, green green screen or, or both yeah, yeah, blue screen uh, and blue, blue okay, screen is still, so wasn't, is, yeah. blue screen is still used nowadays. So some people, I, I got to mention this because people come back and say, "Well, they don't even use blue screen anymore." I go, well, "Hell, they don't. They absolutely use blue screen." Um, mm -hmm. Blue screen, you guys can look up the difference on YouTube. There's tutorials on this. Blue screen is used for darker environments, like nighttime scenes, if you're doing CGI, and green screen is used for a lot of daytime stuff. And since a lot of the movies nowadays are shot in in brighter sunlighty CGI stuff, green screen is, is more heavily used. But blue screen is absolutely still used. Yeah, and I wasn't convinced about this, but I did see something very interesting on YouTube the other day where um, a guy, I don't know if you've seen the the ISS feed uh, video where it shows a guy passing a baseball cap. He's spinning it around. And oh, he yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. That's brilliant because it, in order to do that, and the reason why they screwed that up, you guys don't know what we're talking about. Go to... A YouTube channel called DITRH. He was one of the first people to break this story. And two astronauts are in front of a camera, and one of them's twirling a microphone and a baseball cap simultaneously. And something goes wrong where it looks like he's going to, he makes a hand motion like he's moving either the baseball cap or the microphone over to the guy to his right. And the guy to his right grabs it 
and then moves it over to the to his far right to the to the side of the spacecraft. The problem is is that the object never moves. The guy grabs nothing. The, the object was never there. So did the astronaut screw up? Where you know they they reached for something? You know they they did they miss their cue or did the monitor? Because if you're doing that sort of thing, it's sort of like the weatherman on television. You know the weatherman on television. You know they've got that big graphic behind them, but they never look at the graphic. They're looking at the monitor in front of them. That shows them what what they're pointing at. And that's what I think happened. I think the monitor in front of them, the CGI, live CGI graphics screwed up, and they did only what they could, but it was, it was horrible. It was absolutely the most blatant thing I've seen all year. And the reason it happened is because they were doing a live feed with some school children from the United States. And it's like, look, you can't do live stuff anymore. I don't know why they keep trying. Uh, there's a reason why live, why all the shows out there aren't live. Live means you're going to make mistakes. And for something like that, it's critical that you do not make mistakes. And they did. It was it was blatant. Mm, and another one was um, a, few, a few other videos I've seen where there's supposed to be a time lapse um, sending messages from space. And they're, and they're sort of oh, speaking yeah, yeah, yeah. live. And yep. you can see that although they're trying to pretend there's a time lapse, yeah. their face, their facial reaction to some things are said are immediate so it doesn't quite tie in oh yeah yeah where where you're talking when a news reporter again the, when you're trying to do something live or even pre-recorded but live will definitely give you away you like a news reporter is talking to somebody on the iss there's a time delay supposedly we used to have these on phone lines you know years ago but there's well you know could be a second or two where you're waiting for the question but yet the it's never consistent and the time delay, it's, 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 it's weird. Sometimes it's two seconds, sometimes it's half a second, sometimes it's four seconds. You, it's, it's all over the map. And then you see things like the, the Chris Hatfield uh, orchestra sync up where Chris Hatfield, the astronaut with a guitar on supposedly the International Space Station, is playing with a choir and a singer down on, on the planet and they're absolutely synced up. That cannot happen, I can tell you that right now. Even over Skype, there is a, a slight millisecond delay. I've tried this because I've tried doing a sync up singing with somebody else, and we can never ever get it. And that's just Skype to Skype. Yeah, so let's not let's not try that today, Mark. No, no, let's not definitely do that. I do not consider myself a great singer. Um, yeah, I, I actually looked into that. Uh, someone claimed that perhaps when the ISS is moving around, sometimes it's closer to Earth and sometimes it's farther away. Whatever. No, yeah. no, it's no, it's not. It's it, even if you believe mainstream science, it, the the variation is is only a few percent. It's no, mm. no, it's not. At that point, you'd have to say, oh no, well sometimes it's four hundred miles and sometimes it's two thousand miles. No, it can't happen because. You, if you believe mainstream science, above that you run into the Van Allen belts, and then they'd be dead. So there is no variation. There's a reason why mainstream science says there's this very narrow band where all the satellites supposedly are, and the ISS and everything else. Yeah. Um, now some people say that um, the people who believe in the flat Earth, Earth idea are not only sort of wasting people's time, but they're there to discredit alternative thinkers and to make them sort of uh, you know get open-minded people to start uh, you know. Uh, Thinking that, thinking of, and talking about something that just something makes all their not, other ideas. That, that yeah. takes away. In fact, I'm, uh, the interview yeah. I'm doing after this, I'm sure he's going to go down that road because mm. he's going to say, "Well, it's going to take take people away from the real conspiracies, the the big conspiracies. You know, the ones that are legitimate." I'm going. I'd come back and say, "Okay, two things. One, you don't need flat Earth to convince people that conspiracy people are a little off. You know, conspiracy yeah. conspiracy guys have been had a bad rap for a long, long time." But the second thing is, okay, tell me a conspiracy that's out there, a mainstream conspiracy that's bigger than this. You, I, I'd, normally I'd use the words more important because every, but everyone's going to have their personal bias. It's like, well, you know, the, the Pizzagate thing, if it was real, was, it was definitely more important. I'm going, no, it's not. You just haven't uh, broadened your mind big enough or wide enough to take this all in which is I don't care what conspiracy you can think about. Again, 9-11, JFK, Pearl Harbor, Boston bombing. I don't care what it is. It's all underneath the umbrella, which is this thing, which is this starts you. In fact, this should probably amplify every other conspiracy that's out there, which is if you can get your head around potentially that the earth, you know, that we're all in a Truman show, then what else 
is is real and if anything it allows you to not judge every other conspiracy that's out there and it, it's it, i can't seriously i can't judge anybody I, I i laugh when somebody says okay i've got something for you man and you're gonna think it's a little crazy i'm going dude i literally start my day with flat earth so mm. whatever you got i guarantee you it is not going to be as nutty i don't care seriously if it's if it's elvis having bigfoot's baby i don't care <laughs> I, i'm not going to judge you you know, I will look at it and say, OK, well, I may not believe it, but I'm not going to condemn you for it. I've never condemned a single conspiracy since. Yeah, it does require an open mind and it and it would take you to a scary place where, you know, you might uh, you might be living on a planet that's controlled by uh, reptilians or something like that. You know, uh, yeah, again, you it's depending on what kind of personality you are and, and your outlook on life. Potentially, yeah, you could go to dark places or you could go to light places. And that is, if we are in sort of a Truman Show thing, who are the overlords? And the fact that you're even using the word overlords, you know, or, or is it something more benign? You know, lots of religious people have jumped in on this and said, is this proof of intelligent design? Is this the handprint of God? And is, are we being kept in here to protect us from what's out there? Or are they being protected from us? Are we a box of kittens or we are a box of scorpions? I think it could go either way because, but I kind of lean towards scorpions because Lord knows we've we've done some horrible things over the millennia. Still, it would be nice to think we're kittens. Um, I I would I would <laughs> sure why not? I we, we've got some of those traits, but you know full well. I mean, we've also got some uh, we've got some dangerous traits as in there in the mix. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, some um will say some scientists will say that a belief in flat earth and the questions asked about it uh, due to a lack of understanding about complex scientific explanations like refraction and things like that what would you say to that good i i, I personally this is the one time i can say i'm glad that the powers that be dumbed down the public to such a degree that basic scientific principles are now coming in as static because it helps us it gives us it gives us a level not no play on words there a level playing field to start because beforehand science would just say oh well it's it's they because they weren't people weren't conditioned with the other scientific principles like refraction then they can't just regurgitate it no one knows it so we come in and we get our, our foothold in and, and find that we get to say okay this is our position prove us wrong and because not many people take look, there's not as many uh, heavy scientific people in the world as there used to be, then the, you know, they, they have a hard time put, you know, coming out there. But no, it, no, there is no scientific principle that can shoot this down. There is no silver bullet. We, if, if it hasn't happened by now, it's not going to happen. Uh, academia has had their chance and we've heard all the arguments. At this point, there's there is nothing. I don't care what you want to say about refraction and, and superior mirages and you know, law of perspective. We'll just throw it right back in your face because we to to make our arguments work. We had to use mainstream science. We're kind of using it like judo where we use your the person's body weight against them. That's what we're using against science. We didn't come up with eight inches per mile squared. That's your stuff. We didn't come up with a law of perspective. Also, you. And so on and so on. We, we, all this stuff we took from mainstream science, and we're saying, look, your stuff doesn't work. It doesn't apply here for whatever reason. The and and really, a lot of it comes down to social media and technology, where you know the camera technology has improved such t such a degree that yeah, now we can take a zoom lens and we can zoom in HD to a boat that's supposedly gone. I mean, you literally cannot see it from the beach, and we can zoom into it and say, okay, you thought it went over the curve. Now it's back again. What's your explanation? Well, it's a mirage. Well, it's not upside down. Well, it's a mirage. Well, no, it's super clear. And oh, look, the sun just went behind it. And, you know, we can still see it. So what is it? And it's not just a boat. Uh, I put a challenge out to anyone in science and say, look, find me an object, any object, over water, over, say, 150 miles or less, that you can't see with, with some sort of technology. Find me an object that it's impossible to see. And you say, well, the curvature of the earth says I can't, you can't see it. Fine, show me an object that you can't see. It. It's never been done. And it's just the opposite. We can see everything. And some people will finally say, well, you can't see Japan from Los Angeles. I go, you know what? If you, if you made this place a vacuum, 
I bet you you could. If you took away the weather and and made it perfectly flat and took away all the atmosphere, to, you know, because we're looking mostly through nitrogen. If you could you could do that, I bet you you could if you had good enough technology. Because that's really... And, uh, anyway, some, some people have done um, experiments uh, like, uh, yeah, the Bedford Levels experiments that people can check out on the internet. Right. Um, right. Oh, yeah. I, th I oh, think sorry. the explanation oh, right. for that was given uh, was re refraction. But, and, and some of the, ex the scientific explanations are sort of overly complicated like if you read the explanation it just doesn't seem to make sense but you're required really to decide that you don't understand it therefore it must be correct uh, it's a, because it's, it's, a, it's a someone with a higher intelligence has, has worked it out for you exactly the um the perfect example of that would be the well there's a couple different examples i could use but one of them would be the atmosphere for example where the uh the, the, there's a you know we have atmosphere up to a certain point then you have the vacuum of space and we say okay is there a bleeding edge to the atmosphere and then a vacuum is it a hard edge where you have atmosphere atmosphere then vacuum because how is the vacuum of space not ripping off the entire atmosphere that we live in because vacuum is very very powerful and the atmosphere is well, it's pretty fragile and the argument to, to science is, well, we'll work out a whole bunch of equations. And but the point is, is our atmosphere is still here. So obviously our equations work. That's like, well, no, I don't know if you can you can say it like that. You can say that gravity is holding down the atmosphere, but you're still not counteracting the vacuum entirely, are you? I mean, how, how exactly is that happening? And yeah, uh, science will use math. Another perfect example would be that science will come back and say we prove the globe through math for 400 years that's literally that's that is their argument we proved it through math i'm going okay you can be 99.99 percent .99 sure because you're using math that it's a globe but until you get high enough to take the picture and neil degrasse tyson will come back and say well no the pictures don't matter you know, of course they matter to the general public the lowest common denominator the mouth breathers they absolutely matter until you get high enough to take the picture, what do you really know? And you're, you're taking a guess. And eventually they'll, they'll admit to that now, and then I'll throw the core of the earth thing at them as well. I'm going, look, you, you look in, here's the difference between science and, you know, scientism, I should say, and what we're dealing with or what we're trying to do is you can open up any children's textbook. I don't care what year it is. And you'll see the cross section of the earth. We all have seen it, you know, the red band and orange and yellow and white. Right? Cross section of the earth. And that is completely a guess. Absolutely, it's an artist's illustration. And at the bottom, they should have some sort of disclaimer saying, we don't know what's, what's down there. We're taking a guess. And they don't because they don't like questions. They don't like, you know, they, because it's an open-ended question. So what they do is they, in small print somewhere else, they say, well, we really don't know. Well, there's a problem with that. And that is the, the nine-year-old that opened up that textbook, they don't see the small print. So they see that as fact, absolute fact, even though when, you know, they say it's 4,000 miles, if you dig a hole, if you believe mainstream science, it takes you 4,000 miles to get to the center of the earth. Fine. How, how deep have you dug to tell us what the center of the earth looks like? 2,000 miles, uh, 100 miles, 10, you dug down eight miles. That's it. No, nobody's ever dug deeper than eight miles. So why are you telling us not only what our core looks like, but the core of everything? looks like you tell us what the core of jupiter looks like you could tell us what the core of the sun looks like how and and even though you don't know because you don't put the disclaimer on there look we do disclaimers in commercials nowadays you know professional on closed course do not attempt right you don't see that in science books they won't they won't do it we'll i totally agree on with it. you on that on um i do think it's um that it, it should be explained that a lot of scientific um, knowledge out there is not is, is really is guesswork um, yeah. at best because yeah I, I find it extremely dubious when they sort of start telling me about the you know the inter internal core of uh, Saturn or something like that yeah, yeah they don't know until they get there and, and dig down or at least take soil samples and things exactly. like that and, and look science isn't I'm not I'm not trying to be an anti-intellectual that's all science is bad I'm not saying that Science has made some wonderful things for us, you know, light bulb, super great, air conditioning, hey, love that, uh, um, microwave ovens, very convenient, 99.9% .9 of the people don't even know how they work, right, they might as well be magic ovens, 
but when it comes to other things science takes risks don't think that they're incorruptible that's the difference you know when neil degrasse tyson comes out and says science is right whether you believe in it or not it's one of the most arrogant things i've ever heard like look you guys are men like anything else you can be bought you can be sold we've seen it time and time again for, and forget about the military stuff you know where, where scientists were told okay you've got to develop stuff like i don't know nerve gas and, and napalm and atomic weapons forget about that i'm talking about the consumer products where you rush to market before you finish the testing. And we've seen it time and time and time again. Everything from lead paint to DDT to asbestos to, oh, I don't know, the scientists that took the bribes and told everybody that cigarettes didn't kill you. It, it happens, time, it ha you know, these are not things that are in our distant past. They're happening even now. And you know, don't, don't think that just because, yeah, you use a lot of science stuff. No question. You know, everyone's got a smartphone. Everybody's got these cool little things. We, we benefited from science, but science isn't an absolute. And they've kind of fallen to the, the old power corrupts thing where they've turned it into their own religion. And it's, it's, back, it's now it's, it's finally coming back to haunt them. And we're, we're going to call them out until they finally fess up. Fair enough. Um, you mentioned about maps, and um, I just wanted to point out to listeners to check out so that some of the standard maps have got inaccuracies like um, Africa is three times bigger than depicted. Um, it's about 14 times larger than Greenland, for example. Yep. Yeah, the, well, the, most maps, that be, they're both the same size. The Mercator map, even if you believe the, uh, the, the map that they show in schools, which is known as the Mercator map, is 500 years old. It was built to enhance uh, shipping routes and the prominence of the north Hemis northern hemisphere versus the southern hemisphere and it is absolutely wrong there is even if you even if you still believe in the globe the mercator map is wrong you want to see a more accurate map look at the gall peters projection which is far more accurate you know it, it, far far more accurate but they won't even put those into schools because they're afraid it's because it's it's going to be too jarring to the system it's too much of a hassle it, it's it's not they don't want science to the foundation of science to waver even in the slightest even though it's like look the mercator map is wrong even if you don't believe in a flat earth the mercator map is wrong and they will not show you that and it's amazing that they've held hold on to i mean it's 500 year old map you didn't think there were going to be some mistakes uh, it's ridiculous Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's definitely a lot of things I agree with you here. Um, uh, one of the one of the objections that comes up very quickly if uh, if you sort of start talking about the idea of a flat Earth, um, <laughs> people will say you can see the curvature from a plane. <laughs> yeah. um, now yeah, I travel I'm... a lot, and um, and I've I always look out the window, and you I, I would say you can't see the curvature from a plane. But I think what people think is you. See, uh, mean is that when you look to the horizon you can see that sort of little glowy bit that people relate to the curvature of the earth but it's not actually you can't actually see the curvature of the earth from no the plane. no you can't and i put the challenge out to people oh, at least 18 months ago i said look if you think because i i still have people that say they see the curve from the beach it's like no 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 you don't <laughs> see the curve you want to see the curve there's a big difference this is very george orwellian which mm -hmm. is if you are told the earth is curved you're going to see it eventually because you're gonna your mind is gonna want to see it uh i've said people say they've seen it from mountaintops and that they've seen it from planes okay fine every time i have somebody do that i've got a cool little i mean there's a bunch of videos out there but i just pick one that's okay here so here's a weather balloon from 120,000 feet that's four times higher than commercial air traffic it's and it's video it's not a still shot and it's it's long and it's perfectly flat absolutely around and it and it spins around and everywhere it looks it's absolutely flat so if it's flat at 120,000 feet and yet the Red Bull jump with Felix Baumgartner shows, you know, uh, at, at about the same same distance, maybe a little higher, maybe 130,000 feet, shows a severe curvature, then one of those two videos is lying. Which do you think it is? The one that was shown on mainstream with Red Bull endorsing it? Or the one, you know, because that's the one they want to do. It's like, well, if we, we put a fisheye lens on it, it'll make him look like he's even higher. It's way, way higher. It's like, look, it's only 120, 130,000 feet. You're not going to see the, even Neil deGrasse Tyson says, look, you can't see the curvature of the earth from any civilian means. And then it leads back to, okay, so only the military has access to the curvature of the earth. Well, yes. 
Yeah, okay, the so the, uh, the Red Bull jump. Um, a lot of people think that's proof, but it's very easy to realise that. I mean, it's not. That's not the curvature of the Earth. They're using a fisheye lens. Um, oh yeah. And yeah. You, you only need to look down because the area they're looking at is just. If that's the whole Earth, then it doesn't make any sense, does it? With with, with what you can no, see. No, no, no. It's it, the 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 fisheye lens is way too severe. And if people don't know what a fisheye lens is, it's a peephole lens. So when you're looking through a peephole in your door it makes your hallway look curved but you know that your hallway isn't curved because you can open the door and you can go out and look that's the difference whereas the average person can't go up into space to, to see it for themselves but well, i'll put the challenge out to your listeners as well which is if you think you see the curvature you take a picture of it you put it on your laptop or your tablet or whatever and you hold a straight edge up to it tell me if the curve's still there and if it is send it to me and i will quit flat earth right now to date no one has sent me anything. In fact, the closest we got was a pilot. In fact, it was just about a month ago who and I put a made a video on it, who sent a picture to his buddy and it, the clouds were sort of curvy. But when he, we, when he cranked up the contrast, you could see the actual horizon and it was flat as a board. And again, the, that pilot, which is one of the few pilots that actually, you know, still was believing it. Every pilot I've talked to says the same thing. They say, oh yeah, we, we see flat. We see it's absolutely flat once you get above the weather, but because we're told it's a globe and because we get from point A to point B, we put it out of our minds. It's this weird paradox for pilots. They all see it's flat. They see it every freaking day, but they, there's nothing they can do about it because even if you, even if you convinced yourself it was flat, if you're a pilot, who are you going to tell? You'd be out of a job. Two seconds. You're not going to get on a plane with somebody that, uh, that thinks the world's flat. Not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought I'd found a video the other day that that showed the curve, but um, it was from a balloon. Uh, but then I was just I was dismayed to see when it landed, the the, the Earth was still curved. Oh yeah, yeah, actually... that's the dead giveaway. When they get down to the ground, the uh, the curvature, you'll see. You know, you're you're just literally sitting on the ground, but it looks like you're on a hill. It's uh, the fisheye lenses look it, have been great for photography over the years, but they have really helped the globalist movement because you can use them in just about anything and at any altitude it will make the 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 surface of the earth curved and we're not when you're listening to this i'm not saying a little bit of curve i'm talking severe curvature to where it, you know if you believe the curvature and you know anything about math the earth would not even be a thousand miles wide it would be tiny because the curvature is so much you know you got yeah. you complete the circle anyway it's ridiculous so anyone who's listening who's just thinking about, you know, looking through this and researching it, just make sure you check when, if, if it's a balloon or something like that, check when it's on the ground. Is there still a curve? Because if there is, it's definitely a fisheye, yep. fisheye lens. Um, I wanted to um, move on to a few more questions. Um, you mentioned, you actually mentioned something about this a second ago, but um, I wanted to ask you, how easy would it be for you to drop this idea? I mean, what kind of information or proof would you need uh, to prove to you that, you live on a globe. I need a lot at this point. There's so we've created so much reasonable doubt in the globe that I don't know if there's any one thing. If I had to take, if if I had to do one thing, if 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 somebody had to show me one thing, it'd have to be 4K resolution NASA footage taken from the pad, from the rocket pad, leaving Earth orbit and getting several million miles out at least and that footage would have to be the original it would have to be we would have to be able to analyze it and tear it apart and see if we could you know see if we could find the flaws because right now there's nothing that's without without flaws and that footage that i just told you doesn't exist which is why i'm waiting with you know, not necessarily bated breath but i'm waiting for the spacex mission that they're talking about taking tourists around the moon next year this time yeah, next year, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't yeah. wait to see how they try to fake that it's never going to happen they, they can't it will be it. interesting in the next sort of few decades as to whether there's going to be another moon mission or some of these things will be revealed for sure um oh now the, oh, go ahead, yeah, go sorry ahead. no go ahead i was gonna um i was gonna also say and uh, i think i think sometimes if you make a statement people are gonna just laugh but i think you then have to check put it back to them and um and for example, I was going to say, how about the sun? Do you think it's closer than we've been told? I've heard that many flat earthers believe it's like 3,000 miles away. 3,000 miles. That, yeah. And I, know, I just wanted to make the point that a lot of people are going to laugh at that. But then, really, 
we've got nothing to go on. The average man in the street has nothing to go on. They're literally putting their trust in science. And uh, that's that's what a lot of this boils down to is like, how, how much do you trust mm. science? And there are some people that trust it implicitly and will say it's just ridiculous to say that the, the sun is um, 3,000 miles away. What about yourself? What would you say about that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I follow the whole dome theory, you know, hence the website enclosedworld.com that we're in a Truman show. And if it is a giant Truman show that the, the this thing kind of looks like a shallow sports stadium from the outside, that the sun and the moon are inside this thing, they kind of spin around like a yin yang symbol. They're both about 3000 miles away. They're both about the same size, maybe less than 50 miles across. The sun is some sort of directional light system, so it's not omnidirectional because you know, people will come back and say, well, there's time zones. When the sun light up everything at once, I'm going, not if it's a directional light source and not if it's really, really small. I've, got, I've physically got a model lying around that, uh, that shows what it looks like. And not just, not just computer simulation. There's pe you know, people that have made wonderful models that show what the sun will look like over this thing. It's like a mobile spinning around a child's crib. That's, that's all you need. And again, NASA's the one, you gotta remember who told you the dimensions of this place. You know, who told you the moon was 237,000 miles away? Who told you the sun was 93 million miles away? The same guys that, that told you they went to the moon, those guys, you know, that, that, that nobody else went to the moon. 40 years later, no one's even talking about going to the moon. Now they're talking about Mars, never gonna happen. It's, you, you're, you put your faith, blind faith, into people to where now they're just abusing it. Now they're just just throwing stuff all the time. I mean, every year it's like, oh, here's an asteroid that looks like a Halloween thing. Here's an asteroid that looks like Santa Claus. Here's an asteroid that looks like a duck. Uh, it, it's they all the space stories are the same thing. They they don't. They're not necessarily meant to inspire fear. They're meant to reinforce the globe. It doesn't matter if there's a face on Mars or a hexagram on Saturn or a new thing of Pluto. It's the subtext, which is something on Mars because you're on a globe. Something on Saturn, globe. It goes on and on and on. It's just to reinforce the globe. That's their primary goal is to keep you thinking that you're in, you know, an insignificant speck that's just flying through this massive space instead of, again, the Truman Show reference, where you're actually very, very significant in a very small place and it was designed to have you acting naturally. And atheists probably wouldn't be... Um all too happy with the idea of what you describe with a dome and a flat earth because that really would lend itself to a designed earth wouldn't it yeah this this puts a test on atheism no question because even if and again i'm not going to put a name on god because i still think the the major five religions st have all have pieces to the same puzzle here but they make up 80 percent of the population those five religions and if this place was built you know if if it is the shape we think it is then it was built and if it was built, oh, there's, you know, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of leaning towards the, a creator. And yeah, you could split hairs and say, okay, it's an advanced technology versus a divine being, but really how much, how much would we be able to tell the difference between the two? You know, if a giant golden eggy spaceship landed and said, we built it, most people would, would go for that and say, yeah, okay. You know, as long as they didn't look like us. Yeah, and in Genesis, in the Bible, actually, it does say, uh, let us create them in our image. And right. uh, it almost lends itself to an alien concept. Um, yeah, well, and then that's just it. Are they alien? Because I'm saying that, look, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, all that stuff, that's not out there anymore. So uh, I still think that a lot, you know, people that we, we say are aliens, you know, ships, I, oh, absolutely there's ships flying around. You can take night vision and watch them anytime you want out, out there. Just You have to have night vision, though. The uh, I don't think they're from other planets. I think they're just older versions of us. I think we are not even close to being the, the first people to rent this apartment. I think this is a fairly old place and that our civilization has only been around 5,000 years. We're, uh, we're just the newest tenants. Right. Um, and um, a, lot of a lot of scientists will talk about the ability to create experiments to prove things. Um, do you think we should be able to replicate a spinning ball with water on the surface in some kind of atmospheric chamber? Do you think that should be possible if a, no, if a globe Earth it, is... It, it can't be done because you can't compensate for the gravity problem. I, and I know it's a simple argument. People go, oh, water doesn't stick to a ball. Well, the, the problem is, is that you can't test it in a zero-G environment. Not really. 
I mean, yeah, you could test it. Yeah, you could test it in a zero G plane technically for a little while, even though they haven't bothered to do that, which I think is kind of curious. Maybe it'd be kind of too messy. I mean, yeah, you can you can put a water droplet and it turns into a sphere, sure. But the problem with a plane is is there's gravity. Everything has mass, and so you've got gravity gravitational processes happening all over the place. So I don't think you can do an objective test down here. But to that point, there is something very interesting about this world when it comes to gravity, if you believe in the sphere, which is the, the, the oceans are perfectly level all over the place, meaning they're perfectly uniform. And saying, well, what does that mean? I'm saying, well, you know, you take anything like a merry-go-round, right? It, you know, if, if the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles at the equator, yeah, it's very slow over a 24 hour period, but it's still a thousand miles an hour. Those oceans, which are very, very big, should start pooling a little bit, very, at least a little bit at the equator. There should be a big bulge of water. There should be like no coastline at the equator. It's kind of like a, a poor man's version of Saturn's rings. And, you know, there should be bald spots on the northern pole, northern uh, the uh, the North Pole and the South Pole, if you believe in the globe, and yet we don't we don't see that. That isn't there. You're telling me that centrifugal force is completely counteracted. Centrifugal force with water, with liquid, is completely counteracted by gravity. I don't buy it. I, I don't. Uh, the other thing would be um, just ever so slightly. The it, remember a merry-go-round. If it's spinning at the outer edge, then it's not spinning at all in the center. You know, which means the North Pole. You, you don't have any centrifugal force at all. So if there's no centrifugal force, that means that an object should weigh slightly more at the North Pole than it does at the equator. Because remember, the, the centrifugal force tries to push things off. It should be measurable. We have very precise instruments nowadays, and, and yet we, we don't see any test along sciences lines you know, that, that show it. So can, you think of, um, can you think of an experiment that that could be done that would prove this one way or another. I mean, for example, if you fired a laser over an ocean um, and, it, and, it, and it appeared to be flat along the entire surface, that would probably uh, prove well, the flat Earth model, wouldn't it? Nah, well, yeah, but you can't because laser, you got dispersion, uh, dispersal patterns. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, we tried that early on where you're, even your, your good lasers, I mean, not industrial lasers, uh, they, have, they spread about two feet per mile and to where the beam gets way too big, which is, of course, you know, all right, well, if you're shooting at the moon 237,000 miles away, you're getting, what, half a million feet of dispersal just to get there. Then how are you reading photons on the way back? That's a whole other thing. But there's not the, there's too much atmosphere. Get a member, you're only breathing 20% oxygen. The rest is nitrogen, and it's too thick. The, the laser, you'd never be able to get it across an ocean. There's just too much between the, here and there. But again, 150 miles, you should, less than an entire ocean, You a laser test, if you could get the beam small enough, should be able to prove something, which is why the subject matter expert that I did, the Navy guy, the, the missile instructor from the United States Navy, who was using beam radar, you know, very small beam radar, going at 50 nautical miles or 60 land miles ship to ship. And that's 2,000 feet of curvature. Should not be able to hit that other ship uh, from from that uh, that height. And he could every time. And he goes, well, how are we doing that? That's that's then that's a fairly small distance. That's only 60 60 land miles. And you know, we could do that with military equipment now. Uh, the ultimate test, of course, would be to test the coastline of Antarctica. And you'd have to do an objective test. You can't just have the military tell you because that's the one thing that's absolutely foreign to, you know, it's completely different from the globe model, which is Antarctica isn't this continent that looks like Australia. It is just this massive continent that sweeps around all of us, you know, that's completely on the outside of us, like a big ring. And, uh, you know, it's not necessarily an ice wall. I know everyone will say, oh, it's a wall. It's like, well, you know, it's a shoreline. Yeah, a couple hundred feet, but it's not the wall from Game of Thrones. Uh, you know, but it, but it does go up even higher. You know, it, the, the continent, even mainstream science will tell you, the entire Antarctic continent is about 14,000 feet high, which is really, really weird. It's very unique when it comes to continents. And, but anyway, to test the Antarctic coastline, because it would be oh, boy, 10 times longer the coastline than it would be on a on a globe earth that would have to be tested if it could be tested but the antarctic treaty forbids even testing you know within 
uh, hundred, several hundred miles of the coastline of Antarctica. It, Antarctica is locked down forever, which again, people should look into that, the 1959 treaty. No, well, it's no quite need. a mysterious place, isn't it, Antarctica? Some people believe there's secret bases there, and uh, there seems to be lots of mysterious trips uh, recently by celebrities. Um, right. So, so yeah, if someone could go to the edge there, it'd be it'd be gr uh, great to to prove it once and for all. Um, if if you mm. if you could, I mean, the average person can go there. You want to spend, uh, if you're using British pounds, about ten thousand British pounds to get there. But you're only going to be allowed to do the, the coastlines, take pictures with penguins, the peninsula. You may get taken to the pole, maybe, if, you, if, you, if you're lucky enough to do it. But you're not going to be allowed to roam around free. <coughs> me. Antarcticflights.com claim that they can fly for four hours over the ice. Um, would you be saying that they just see a small part of Antarctica or, or are the flights fake? It could be either. But I, I think they only see a small part of Antarctica. I think it's... You got to remember that Antarctica, the the world's greatest explorer, in my opinion, Richard Byrd, United States Admiral, he flew over that thing for the better part of 30 years before he finally found whatever it was he was he was going to find. I think the coastline, when you hit the Antarctic coastline, I feel, still think there's thousands of miles before you get to... I'm not going to call it the edge. I'm going to call it the, the outer marker, the outer barrier which is, you know, the end of the world as it was. But I don't, you know, everyone keeps like, oh, it's the ocean where the ocean sloughs off into space. It's like, dude, come on. Stop, stop thinking that far back. It's, uh, it's, it's much more modern than that. It is, again, the Truman Show. How did the water get held in in the Truman Show? It was, it was a big structure. And that's, you know, the, the, anyone that's doing stuff in the Antarctic, it's very, very limited. The governments down there, some scientists down there, no corporations. Again, that's, that to me was such a huge flag which was no corporation is allowed to go down and set up shop in Antarctica ever. No country, no, no matter how much money. It was like, what are you talking about? Petroleum companies can get in anywhere. Uh, mining companies can get in anywhere. There's, there's companies that can spend the money. They'll, they'll do the lobbying to do it. And the, it's, it's ironclad. No country. They're not even allowed to talk about it. That's also you know a, a big tell. Which is not only is my corporation, which has billions of dollars, and I can bribe my way into anywhere, including national parks, I'm not even allowed to suggest it. How does that happen? What conspiracy is bigger than money? Well, I can think of one. That is uh, one where you've got to hide the whole world. And it's, it's been very clever, but fortunately they've run out of time. We've almost run out of time as well, but um, just a, a, a couple more questions. Um, mm -hmm. this, this one's deviating slightly. Um, I don't know if you remember the Malaysian plane that went missing, the MH370. Sure. Um, sure. It's a topic we co we've covered uh, quite extensively on this show. And I wondered if you saw any significance in the fact that the plane disappeared in the summer southern hemisphere where you mentioned planes aren't disappeared. tracked. Yeah. And uh, was, I, I... was said to be heading for Antarctica. Oh, I did, I did not know that. I had not heard that. But if you, if you type in MH370 Antarctica, you'll see that almost all articles except the fact that um, the route it was going was heading for Antarctica. That's interesting. I had no idea. It wouldn't necessarily surprise me. The, the, the flights in the Southern Hemisphere are, was one of the things that got me into the clues, which was that planes, when they get offshore, and it's not just in the Southern Hemisphere, it's also in the Northern Hemisphere. If your plane gets away from land, to a point where there's no islands, significant islands between you and wherever your destination is, your GPS system will drop off. Now the plane will still get going where it's going because it's on, on autopilot, it's going to find its way. But the the tracking system goes goes off, meaning your latitude and longitude disappears and your plane goes into approximated or estimated mode. And this is very interesting because it is completely counterintuitive to what we've been told. Look, if, if the GPS system, which is the United States Department of Defense, 32 supposed satellites, blanket coverage, there should be no no blind spots anywhere. And yet every plane, you can, you can really watch this in the Southern Hemisphere, just blinks off. Once it gets like 150, 200 miles offshore, which is out of the range of normal radar, it disappears. And it does not come back until it's within land distance of wherever it is. Same thing like if you're flying in the northern hemisphere, like from uh, Los Angeles to Hawaii. 
when you get to a certain point, your plane is gone. Oh, no, the graphics still may be there, depending on which system you look at. But if you try to get the latitude and longitude, nope, gone. And mm. that is because, and it's the, basically what, it, what it's telling me is it's the old Loran system, L-O-R-A-N, also U.S. military. They just slapped a new sticker on it when they went to the space age and said that, oh, yeah, we're doing it all by satellites now. And that's not, so when the, when the Malaysian flight disappeared in the area, in the Indian Ocean, where there was no coverage, that particular point, that always bugged me anyway, because I'm from the Northwest where, where Boeing is headquartered, headquartered. And that, that's a, that was a triple seven, you know, that, that's state of the art, that's a flagship. And you're telling me the state of the art plane was not being tracked and nobody found anything. I'm, of course, you know, later say, oh, we found this wreckage and this wreckage. It's like, really? Where'd the black box go? Where, where did that plane go down exactly? It was the Indian Ocean. It wasn't the Pacific Ocean. South Pacific things can get lost. Indian Ocean? Come on. You're telling me nobody knew where that plane was? Uh, it was it dropped off. It was very, very interesting, though. And, it is uh, a very interesting uh, topic. But hence, uh, anyone who wants to check out our episodes on that, go to our website, which I'll give you later. And we'll get um, Mark's uh, website soon. Um, we probably need to uh, wind up now, Mark, but I, I okay. wanted to ask you... Um, I've, I've been looking into this and I'm still not decided, but I, I'm not 100% sure what I'm living on at the moment. Some mm -hmm. people have said to me, though, who cares? Why does it matter whether, whether the Earth's um, spherical or flat? Which I, I personally, I think is, is crazy. Like, of course it matters. But well, I, wonder what, I wondered what your reactions to that. I've heard that a lot. Maybe one in every 10 emails I get is it's like, why does it matter? I'm going, okay. One, you're just saying that because your life is so hectic and stressful. That's all you can think about. So, you know, they say, well, I still get to have to go to my crappy job tomorrow and my wife still hates me. And my kids don't listen, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But when this happens, and, and for those people, what it wouldn't matter until it did, until the day it did. You get a, and I will use a Truman Show reference here, which is the second that Truman even had an inkling that the world was not what he thought what it was. That was his obsession. That's all he cared about. That's, that's all the way, you know, and, and again, human beings, there's a reason why this place was hidden for as long as it was, because every other species on this planet figures out instinctively a way to live within its means. If human beings figured out that they were in, in some sort of confinement, that's all anyone would talk about entire new religions would pop up uh churches would relocate cities would relocate it's all the media would talk about for years if they if somebody didn't step forward and say we built it they would it would be okay you know that's all people would be thinking about this all the time because it changes everything that you know you're not an insignificant speck anymore now you're part of something you the question you would have an endless series of questions we all know what they are which is who made this place? Who made me? Why am I here? Now, these are old questions we've li we've had before, but now we're way closer to figuring that out than we've ever been. And that's exciting. That's why this thing is, is gaining so much traction and is so much pop more popular than the average run of the mill conspiracy is because it's the only one I know that has a message of hope. You want to know why you're here? You want to know, you know, the, the meaning of life? This is one giant step closer. Yeah, it, it would also be um, a huge, huge lie, and uh, would would make people wonder, you know, how much, oh, yeah. what other things have they been lied about? True. Um, once once people have explored the main ideas of flat Earth, for anyone who's interested, I'm sure some people listening will be looking into this now, and they're in, in, intrigued enough to continue their research. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice on what to look into for more advanced aspects of the idea of a flat Earth? Uh, first thing, if you're going to look into it again, I got to promote the community first, just go into YouTube, type in flat earth. And the first, cause the cream always rises to the top. The first 20 or 30 videos are generally pretty good. And if you want to see my stuff, type in flat earth clues. I put together a short list that's got a great uh, combination, a uh, great variety of videos from different artists in, in my YouTube channel. It's called the flat earth short list for new people. That's pretty good, but once you get into it, you're going to be jumping all over the place anyway. I mean, there's no there's no one right road, one right path to go down. So everyone's just going to have to find their own way. But what I try to recommend to people is like, look, it's easier said than done, but pace yourself because you're going to get burned out eventually. You know, you try watching flatter videos for three days without sleep. 
you, you, you know, you're going to be in a pretty weird place by the time you get you get done. Although we haven't heard of anybody shooting up a post office or anything. <laughs> uh, so that's that's why I'd recommend to people just take it easy, do your own research, don't believe anything I've said here. Just, Ask your own questions and prove it for yourself because I'm not going to convince you in one show. Yeah, and your, your website is enclosedworld.com, is that right? Enclosedworld.com, but he, honestly, the, the, the faster route, the faster track would be just go into YouTube, type in Flat Earth Clues. You will find my channel eventually. It's called Mark Sargent. Great, and um, just final question. Um, uh, what are you working on at the moment? What's the next stage for you? I mean, are you planning on just talking about this for a, for a long period of time? Is there any kind of um, aim that you've got? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the big aim is mainstream, which is so, sooner or later, because, you know, everything still boils down to money when it comes to getting things out into the mainstream. Some producer is going to pick this thing up. It's only a matter of time. The question is what are they going to do with it? Are you going to do a documentary? Are you going to do some sort of reality show? Are you going to do some sort of movie based on real events? Who knows? That's, that's always in the background. I'm always talking to people along those lines. Who's going to pull the trigger? I'm focused, and, and until that happens, I'm going to be focused on the conference. <laughs> First Flat Earth conference in the United States ever in the history of the United States is going to be happening this fall in raleigh north carolina that's in the middle of the east coast and a lot of people are going to be there if you guys are interested you can go to fe2017.com uh, or you can just type in flat earth conference into youtube and you'll find it excellent excellent uh thanks once again for joining us mark it's been a pleasure talking to you it was a pleasure being here thank you for inviting me thank you okay um yeah mark thanks for that that was just oh, the great. official official ending um cool i'll uh i'll edit that down um and uh, I'll send you a copy of the link when it's cool. done. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Thanks again. We went a bit over, but hopefully ah. you'll, you've still got time for your. I was trying to. Oh get, yeah, I got. I, I, got I time had. I had. Worried. I had more questions, and I was trying to like answer every question about this topic, but that's kind of impossible in a. Oh, short time. Dude, I have done. I, which is why I mean, some of these hangouts go five hours. I can only do like two, when I when I try to limit it to to two hours. But oh yeah, you could. I could talk about this thing forever. Yeah, well, good because if if ever uh, if ever something crops up um, in the future, and I think okay, that definitely proves we're on a, a globe. I'll I'll contact you, and if you, if you, if you, yeah. if you wanna if you've got an explanation for it, then maybe you could come back on and um, have a chat. Oh, about absolutely, it. absolutely. Oh yeah, and by the way, the the one thing I should mention to you, Joe Rogan is going. Supposedly, the rumor is he's going to dedicate a show against flat Earth today. Now he's bringing a debunker. I do not think there's anyone opposing him. Nobody that I know. So I think it's just he and a debunker just trashing Flat Earth for two hours. And but, is he uh, going to have his friend? Uh, what's that guy's name? Oh, uh, Eddie Bravo. I don't. Eddie think Bravo. So. Yeah. First of all, think... when I saw um when I f first saw Eddie Bravo and Joe Rogan, I thought uh oh, he seems a bit of an idiot. But then he started actually making more sense than Joe Rogan, and th and then they they kind of really laid into him. And I saw how Joe Rogan has changed over the years, how he used to say all the, the moon landings are definitely fake. And then he's just, seems like he has been bought out a little bit. Uh, yeah, he has. And whether it was by, you know, carrot or stick, one, one, of, one of the two things happened to him. And I feel bad because, you know, nobody likes to be compromised. You know, if there's a weak spot though, I mean, who knows? Maybe they threatened him. Maybe they, they said horrible things. I don't know. Um, I'm glad that he's talking about it. Part of me, part of me, the, the optimist side thinks that he's being clever and he's bringing it up so many times because this way he can talk about it without breaking the rules. Part of me that thinks that's what he's doing. Uh, so the thing with Eddie Bravo, we'll, we'll see how that pans out. Eddie, I'm hoping Eddie doesn't back down, but Joe is the only, literally the only conspiracy guy I've ever known that turned against conspiracies.